Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to talk to you today about uh, the older part of our population, and that would include any, anyone actually who's in the hospital, so their uh, food is not um, being selected by them, or someone in a rehab facility, and a rehab facility could be someone quite young who's had a, uh, a bad fracture or someone who has suffered a stroke. So these are places someone goes to after being in the hospital for a period of time to get rehabilitation. Their food is being served to them and they are um, a bit at the discretion of that institution to feed them in a fashion that they've requested if they have any particular food sensitivities. I recently had a personal experience with this because my mother who's 88 had uh, lower back surgery so she was in the hospital for a few days after which uh, she went to a rehab facility. She's still there actually uh, doing very well. Um, but the situation was obviously after the concern of how did the surgery go uh, was how is she being fed and needless to say I was watching it like a hawk and speaking to dietitians, etc. But despite that, despite my best efforts, um, if I had not been there as much as I was, she definitely would have been fed gluten, she definitely would have been fed dairy products um, because these institutions are really not set up to ensure that those kind of food sensitivities are, are adhered to. Um, they do know better for the most part. I spoke to um, one of the senior representatives uh, in the hospital is a very, very well known hospital in our country. Uh, the rehab facility is equally very well known. Um, and when I spoke to the staff regarding diet, they were embarrassed. They were not happy with the results that we had experience, but needless to say, that's still what we experienced. So um, my cautionary tale is this. Uh, number one, statistically, or as far as research is concerned, we do know um, since uh, September 2010, when a great research study was done by Dr. Alessio Fasano and many other contributors, uh, the name of this, it's long, so hold on while I look down, it was called The Natural History of Celiac Disease Autoimmunity in a USA Cohort followed since 1974. So I have spoken about this study before, uh, but basically what they did was they followed uh, the blood of soldiers over about 25 years and discovered that the incidence of celiac disease actually increases with age. So it then statistic and, and by a, a quotient of four is what came out of this study. So we do know that as we get older, our our incidence of celiac disease is rising. It's quadrupling, in fact. So just because someone didn't have celiac disease when they were younger doesn't mean that they won't have it as they get older. I certainly did experience this uh, with my dad, um, who developed a gluten intolerance with age when he didn't have it when I first was testing him, but he developed it as he got less healthy. So if you are suspicious of gluten intolerance or you know of celiac disease in your family and you have any older relatives who are um, not doing well or especially if they're in a facility where they're not choosing their own food, uh, number one, get them tested and really find out if it's a problem. Uh, number two, if they know it's a problem, and this is something that I've come across uh, with the experience with my mother as well, we were actually at the rehab facility and I was speaking to the uh, director of, of the dining room basically. She was not a registered dietitian, um, but she was the director of, of the dining room and food services and uh, she actually said to me, and my husband was present as a witness, uh, that white bread was okay um, for those with celiac disease and, and gluten intolerance and for years she had been giving patients who said that they couldn't have gluten white bread. Now, this is, of course is not the case. Um, it is interesting how people think white bread uh, is not really wheat because somehow it would look brown if it, if it had wheat in it. So this is of course an entirely incorrect, but this individual has been serving in her beautiful dining room uh, a toxic substance to those people who told her sh they could not eat gluten. I, I was absolutely horrified, as was my husband, and um, 
that prompted the discussion with the, the director of the facility on, uh, from myself. Uh, but that's the case. So if, if you think uh, an, a relative is being well taken care of because you've told somebody they can't have gluten, think again and really monitor it because I can't imagine what would have happened with my mom uh, without a lot of due diligence on my part. Certainly her healing would not have been as good as, as it has been and she of course would have gotten ill from all the varying effects of gluten. So um, I, I think this is a big hole that is really extant, really existing in our society, even with those people who, who know they should avoid gluten if they're relying on someone else to just not feed it to them. Uh, mistakes are being made. My mother was served milk in a carton um, because it was lactose free, which I don't want her to have uh, any dairy products and lactose free is, is not really the, the only problem she has. Um, she was given a, a food bar because it was actually for her neighbor, but she's 88. She's like, oh, chocolate. I'm like, eh, wait a second, <laughs> as I read the label and it contains gluten and dairy. So mistakes can be made, but the problem is it's affecting the health of those we care about. So uh, as I said, if you have any gluten intolerance or celiac disease in your family, please try to check all your relatives, those who already know they can't tolerate it, if they're being fed by someone else, please check to ensure that there's no misunderstandings of what gluten contains because we do know that it affects in our body every system that we have. Uh, gluten intolerance creates over 300 diseases and conditions. It is affecting negatively those you love if they have this problem. And um, it's something we need to be very, very diligent about. And I was surprised at how much diligence it took on my part uh, to be watching like a hawk to ensure that my mom was not tainted with uh, gluten or dairy products uh, during this rehabilitation period. So. I hope that helps. I think it would really improve the health of our family members if we made a little extra effort in this area. And um, until next time, I wish you very good health.